There's something attractive about Denver, Colorado, that's recently drawn professional sports teams to the city in droves. In baseball, the Colorado Rockies, only 14 years old. In hockey, the Colorado Avalanche, only been there for 12 years. And now the newest addition to the Rocky Mountain sports landscape, the Colorado Mammoth. A cross team that doesn't just have a place to stay, they finally have a home. The Colorado Mammoth have created an atmosphere at the Pepsi Center that is unlike any other in lacrosse. With passionate sellout crowds, raucous introductions, and charismatic players, the franchise has become the NLL's flagship team. Fans, are you ready for lacrosse? Go, Mammoth! The electricity in the building is just real. Playing in front of 16, 17,000 screaming fans out there. Right from the start, you come out, they announce your name, you go flying out, there's the fireworks, there's the motorcycles, the cheerleaders and everything, and just people going absolutely nuts. I remember my first practice here, my first game, and we're driving to the arena and there's this huge billboard of Gary Gates, you know, and that's just unheard of, you know, to see a lacrosse guy 50 feet up in the sky and, and uh, in some other cities it almost feels like you're playing make-believe professional athlete, you know, and here you, you, we're actually treated that way and, uh, and you actually feel that way. The road to Denver was not an easy one. After brief stints in Pittsburgh and Baltimore, the franchise had thought they found their home in the nation's capital as the Washington Power. Certainly we had our, our drawbacks financially, which really put us behind the eight ball. And you know, we couldn't afford to, you know, have the, the, the game or the jumbotron on, the, the scoreboard on. Our first game in the Cap Center when I'm leaning up against the glass watching the uh, watching warm up and the owner kind of walks up next to me and says, Steve, where are all the people? <laughs> After just two years in Washington, the organization needed to make some changes. We decided that uh, it was time to look for new buyers. We were searching, you know, everywhere and anywhere for a, a new owner, a new partner. We were almost bought by uh, uh, an Indian tribe. In July of 2002, they found their new home in Denver, Colorado. Cronky Sports Enterprises, the owner of the Nuggets and Avalanche, took a gamble on lacrosse. And on January 3rd, 2003, the Mammoth played their first game in the Pepsi Center. Ticket sales were going pretty well for that game. I remember it, it was January 3rd, 2003, we're playing the Toronto Rock defending champions who had knocked us out of the playoffs the year before. I get the word from our ticket sales people that needed to hold the game by 20 minutes and I was like why I thought there was some malfunction in the in the floor or, or some problem in the building and they said well there's a lineup down to the Conoco station people wanting to get in to see our game not only did the mammoth win that first game in OT but they also won the hearts of the city of Denver Three years after a cross-country move to Denver, the Colorado Mammoth have come to epitomize lacrosse with a high-impact product on the floor, a dedicated fan base, and the 2006 NLL Champions Cup. By the way, you are looking at a quasi-pseudo, part-time, kind of, sort of member of the Colorado Mammoth. Played for the Baltimore Thunder back in the late 90s, who moved to Pittsburgh. Failed there, failed Baltimore, moved to Washington, failed there, end up in Colorado. And the key in both Major League Lacrosse during the summer outdoors and National League Lacrosse indoors is the ownership group. And the Kroenke ownership group is, is world class. The other key is if you dump Kesnick, you become a success. That's what we learned from.